I'd like to welcome each one here this evening for our Monday, April 15th, 2024 meeting here at the Township Council Chambers. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather is traditional territory of the Nishawabi, Udawa, and Mississauga peoples. And tonight we have reports from the different staff members, and I'd just like to thank them for that, to give us information uh, so we can make the best decisions for our constituents. Confirmation of the agenda that the Council of Township of North here and hereby approves the agenda for the April 15th, 2024 Council meeting as presented. May I have a mover? Councillor Wright? Councillor uh, Ben Hitterson? All in favor? Carried. Disclosure of pecuniary interest and then general nature thereof. Go ahead, Councillor McBurney. Yes, Mr. you, Reeve. Uh, I have a conflict in regards to 7.6.2 in the agenda. Uh, as I'm a president of Branch 420 and we're core partners with the theater in regards to uh, the business in that item. Anyway. Thank you very much, Councillor McBurney. Public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to speak to any item of business on the agenda. Two minutes per person. Members wishing to speak will need to state their name and the item of business that they wish to speak to. And as you come up, just want you to, again, say your name and press the button on the mic so the green button will turn on. Anyone? Seeing none. Consent agenda that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby adopts consent item 5.1.1 and further that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives consent items 5.1.2 to 5.3.2 for information purposes. May I have a mover and Councillor Palmer, Deputy Reeve Falconer. Would anybody like to pull anything out? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. Staff reports at this time with 7.1.1 planning 2024-04 consent application badly 442 Gypsy Lane consent application report file COO2-2024 agent owner John W. Shank and Larry and Myrtle Badly. Property description lot 40. Plan 168, Blythe Ward, Township of North Huron, 442 Gypsy Lane. That the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby recommends approval of consent application file 60002-24. Agent and owner John W. Shank, Larry and Myrtle Badley. Property description, lot 40, plan 168, Blythe Ward, Township of North Huron, with the conditions set out on the in the Huron County Planning and Development Report. Presented by Hannah Holman Planner at the April 15th, 2024 council meeting. May I have a mover and a seconder before Hannah? Okay. Go ahead, uh, uh, Hannah yeah. Holman. Thank you for having me this evening, council. Um, as mentioned uh, by the Reeve, um, this application is for an infill uh, residential severance uh, in Blythe on Gypsy Lane. Uh, the subject property is designated residential and zoned residential low density. There is an existing single detached dwelling on the property. Um, this shows the proposed severance sketch as provided by the applicant. Uh, the proposed severed lots approximately 507 square meters, uh, and it's located along Gypsy Lane and Drummond Street, so it will be eventually a corner lot if approved. Uh, and the retained lot contains the existing single detached dwelling, uh, and that lot area is approximately 568 square meters. Both of the lots ha uh, will have a proposed lot depth of 22.5 uh, meters, um, and their frontages vary from 25.2 meters for the retained lands and then 22.5 for the severed lands. Uh, the following shows site visit photos of the property and the surrounding neighboring properties. So as council will see, uh, the proposed retained uh, lot area is vacant. Uh, the application was circulated to uh, neighbors uh, as per the Planning Act and no public written comments have been received as of date. Uh, township staff were also circulated. They have reviewed and indicated no concern as has source water protection. 
Uh, in terms of the policy review, the proposal does meet the policy direction in the provincial policy statement, county and North Huron official plans, which support infill severances in service primary settlement areas. Um, there is a condition uh, to recognize either via minor variance or rezoning to reduce the lot area and depth for the severed lot and to recognize the reduced lot depth for the retained lot. So my report does go into this in greater detail. Um, so the severed lot, the zoning bylaw requirement uh, is 540 square meters and the proposal is 507 square meters. Um, however, despite this um, deficiency, uh, it is my opinion that the severance still continues to meet the intent of the policies and is adequately sized. Um, and then I have also similar comments with respect to the minimum lot depth at 22.5 meters from the required 30 meters. Uh, uh, it's my opinion that the lots are still sufficiently sized and uh, when either that variance or rezoning comes to uh, council or the committee of adjustment, there'll be greater detail at that time. Um, so it is recommended that the application be approved with the attached conditions contained in my report. Um, of these conditions, five are um, standard typical conditions for this type of severance. And then number six is just uh, for an additional variance or rezoning to recognize those deficiencies as previously mentioned. So I'm happy to answer any questions that council may have. Thank you, uh, Planner Holman. Are there any questions from Council at this time? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Palmer. Yeah, thank you, Reeve, and to, to Hannah. Um, so it's short by 33 square meters. I'm just curious, how short do we go? Like, wh where do we draw the line anyways? It's, like, it's good for us to know that. Yeah, through the Reeve, um, so great question. In this case, there's, there's, I guess it's also important to have the context that the other zoning requirements will still be applicable unless the applicant requests relief from them, which they're in the right to do. So, for example, they would still need to maintain the required lot coverage, the required setbacks. As a result of the lot being smaller, they would just possibly have to build a smaller future dwelling. That would be more of the limitations. We would also want to ensure that the lot has sufficient frontage for access and for services, which, um, in my opinion, it does. So in, in some ways, that's often more important than um, specifically the lot area and also the lot depth to ensure they actually are able to have a front yard, a driveway and a rear yard. Um, so in this case, I did I did consider this to be a minor uh, reduction. Um, obviously, if it was quite smaller, maybe less than half the size, um, that would that would might be a different story. But in this case, not too much of a concern. So, any other questions for our planner? Seeing none, do I have a mover for the proposed motion? Dep Deputy Reeve, seconder, Councillor McBurney. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. 7.2.1, Wingham and Blythe Business Improvement Area 2024 budget approvals. Are there any questions for Director Towns? I notice there are some concerns with the municipal liability with security system uh, to leave or take out, um, but that is all in the thing uh, if the concerns are, are met. Uh, so were there any questions for Director Towns at this time? Council? Oh, so go ahead, uh, Councillor Wright, please. Uh, yeah, through your, so yeah, I understand there is some concerns um, with the with the uh, cameras. Uh, however, I, I like to say I was happy with the way it was uh, handled. Um, you know, that it's not off the table yet. It's just kind of put on the back burner until we look into it. Uh, a bit more. So, you know, I think we came to a, a good resolution on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Deputy Reed, please. Uh, thank you. Three Reed. Uh, I'm just curious as to the, the uh, implementation of the, of the, the camera system falling. Uh, is it strictly in the ownership of the, the BIA or is it a, a going to be a responsibility of the township? For maintenance, for for maintaining, or any uh, influx of uh, requests for information, uh, or is it strictly a, a nonprofit doing their own thing? I'll turn you turn over to the clerk, please. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through, um, to answer Deputy Falconer's question, uh, so the municipality certainly does have obligations 
from our understanding in regard to the project. So section 254.1 of the Municipal Act um, deals with uh, municipal records. And basically it states that a municipality shall retain and preserve the records of the municipality and its local boards. Uh, the BIA would be a local board of the municipality um, and in a secure and accessible manner. And then under both MFIPA and the Municipal Act, there's obligations in regard to um, freedom of information requests, as well as um, uh, retention of records, destruction of records, that kind of thing. Um, we'd have to look more into what implementation looks like with the BIA. Um, but I guess to make a, a long answer shorter, uh, the municipality would certainly have some obligations in this project. Follow-up question? Yes, follow-up, please. Thank you. Through your, then uh, is it the intent of the of the, the township then to prioritize this as a, count, as a township-wide initiative? Uh, or is this strictly a single ward? I'm just wondering how that's going to be taxed uh, as far as implementation if it's only used in one spot and not used by the uh, municipality uh, as a whole. Uh, how does that fall under uh, the requirements for, uh, you know, uh, maintenance and upkeep and, and, and uh, you know, whatever could come over. I'm just curious as whether, uh, if it's going to be municipal. Good question. Go ahead. Oh, man. Sorry. Through you, Reeve, to Deputy Reeve Falconer. Um, this project came to us at a very late state. It, we, we don't want to take it off the table. Staff do feel this is a great initiative. Um, the BIA levy goes through the the Wingham BIA goes through the Wingham businesses. Uh, that's how they're levied. Uh, there is no uh, maintenance program. There, there, we're very preliminary in this, and which is why we're recommending we just defer this until we come to a. There's a lot to work out well in advance of approving the project. Councillor Palmer, please. Yeah, thank you, Rave. I'm uh, having trouble understanding why. I can see cities because there's a lot more stuff, a lot more people, a lot more things going on there. Um, here on down Main Street, I, I just don't see it. Um, I, you might have some backlash from citizens. I, you know, if you're going to put it anywhere, I put it in the back alleys behind the stores. That's where all the all the stuff happens. Um, anyways, uh, I I just I'm having trouble with it, and um, in a small town, just doesn't make sense to me. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Wright. You had your hand up, please. Yeah, thanks. So I can I can provide some context on that as I am on the BIA. Um, so um, there was several projects discussed about what the next project the BIA would take on in, in uh, for 2024. Uh, certainly the idea of um, providing um, public Wi-Fi um, was, was, was part of it. And of course, that's all linked in with this. Um, as far as the details of the project go, um, you know, we have the, we have the uh, light poles on Main Street that have power. Right. So when you have power, then all of a sudden you can put Wi-Fi down the main street and then you have power for the cameras as well. This actually is a fairly, from a numerical standpoint, fairly small part of, of the project. Um, and it was really just seen as something that would make uh, our residents feel more comfortable from a security standpoint uh, on uh, main street. From a vandalism standpoint, it would help our businesses out. Um, I think we all heard in the news the very unfortunate event that happened up in, I believe it was Meaford. Uh, where a restaurant owner was killed outside his restaurant on Main Street. What was the one sound? Okay, sorry. So, you know, it was all those things. We're looking for a new project, a Wi-Fi, I think, on Main Street to be, you know, well well, 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 well welcomed. And again, it was just uh, an add-on to say, hey, you know, there, there seems to be a need these days for greater security, right? So why don't we add that to the project? But, you know, I understand there are some legislative concerns to make sure we do it right and let's do with the information and stuff like that. So as I said before, I thought it was, it was handled very well just to put that part of the project on the back burner. We can carry uh, carry on with the implementation of Wi-Fi and, and just basically tack that on if and when it seems um, feasible. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Councillor Palmer then. Deputy Reeve, please, in that order. Yeah, thank you, Reeve. Um, I, kind of want, I don't want to be too negative about this. The Wi-Fi sounds like a, a good plan. Um, but if Main Street, uh, Josephine's, you know, got the cameras, security, all that business, well, then it'll be the back doors that get it. That's the trouble. 
it, it should all, it has to be a full circuit security as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to do it front and back. But like we, we all know there's a lot of examples of things. There's even a death back there once. Um, there's a tent city back there right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff potentially could happen there. So that that's where it'll go if the front end is is secure. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Reed, please. Thank you. Uh, three of you. This uh, question is probably more for the uh, finance department, but I, I haven't uh, familiar my, familiarized myself back again with the constitution for the BIAs. Uh, but I was just curious as to uh, the holding a balance uh, uh, without it being earmarked from year to year. I just noticing on the uh, on the ledgers here with the, all the uh, you know, programs that were earmarked and, and what the costing was for, for everything. Uh, but there uh, there's uh, there's substantial uh, follow over from one year to the act next. Is, do you know if there's uh, anything in the constitution of uh, how much of a uh, a surplus you can hold over from one year to the next? Uh, through you, uh, you Reeve Hefford, uh, Deputy Reeve Falconer. Uh, I do not believe there is anything in the Constitution which has a set amount of a maximum that uh, BIA is allowed to hold in a reserve. Um, my, personally, it's best practice that BIAs utilize their funds. Um, in speaking with members of the BIA, they do have plans to replace the Wingham welcome sign. So this is helping them prepare to do that without having a, a major levy in uh, one year. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. I'll read the motion that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives a report from Director of Finance Treasurer dated April 15th, 2024, regarding the 2024 Wingham and Blythe Business Improvement Area Budget Approvals for information purposes and further that the council hereby adopts the 2024 Blythe BIA budget as presented and further that the council hereby adopts the 2024 Wingham BIA budget as presented subject to the Wingham BIA addressing staff's concerns regarding the Main Street Wi-Fi video security camera project and further that the council directs the director of finance treasurer to incorporate the Wingham BIA and the Blythe BIA levy amounts into the 2024 township of North Huron final budget and 2024 tax levy. May I have a mover? Councillor Wright, Councillor Whitfield, all in favor. Just please, I, I gotta see your hands, sorry. Carried. Should there not be a, pardon me, but should there not be a, you know, who's against, who's for and who's against, so everybody sees? I'll turn it over to the clerk, please. Your, your, your Worship, to answer Council Palmer's question, that's captured in the recorded video for people to refer back to, but in the absence of a recorded vote, uh, it's only who voted in favor of the motion, and basically it'll just be captured as carried. 7.2.2 finance 2024-13 2024 tax rate bylaw that the council of the township of north here and hereby receives the report from the director of finance slash treasury dated april 15th 2024 regarding the 2024 tax rates for information purposes and further that the council adopt bylaw number 3024 being a bylaw for the purpose of levying and collecting rates for various purposes and to provide for the payment of taxes and to provide for penalty and interest as uh, April 15th, 2024, regular council meeting. May I have a mover or are there any questions, first of all, for our um, for Director Towns? Seeing none, uh, may I have a mover? Councillor Van Henderson, seconder. Councillor Palmer, all in favor? Carried. 7.2.3 finance 2024-14 strategic plan goal number 3.5 explore the removal of area rating that the council okay are there any uh we need we require direction here for director towns and uh, at this time i'm asking are there any questions for director towns go ahead councillor van henderson 
Thank you very much, Rifafa. I don't necessarily have a question. I'm just, oh, let me have one. Uh, I, I would just like to ask where this council wants to go. We are looking at user pay systems. We're looking at uh, all kinds of uh, things that would like our residents pay for what they're using right now. And we're talking about equity. We want to have everybody equal. This doesn't sound equal or like equity to me at all. I have trouble looking the residents of these Wamanors in the eyes and say like, yeah, we are doing um, area rating right now and we are charging you, you um, well, like 30 or 40, or maybe even if you have more property or higher values, a hundred or $200 for a bit of air. There's no street lighting in East, in rural East Wawanosh. The If I look out of my window, it is all black. The only lights that are we seeing are coming from yard lights. So how can I look my residents, my constituents in the eye and say like, yep, this will cost you hundred dollars and you don't get anything in for it. I've really, it, it's very, uh, very bad, bad thing to go to. Uh, so my uh, suggestion is to go with um, option number one, the status quo. Thank you. So more, uh, uh, yeah, Councilor Wright, please. So Reeve, I, I don't really have any strong feelings on these three options, to be honest, but um, we do have to recognize that the, the farmers in East Wawanosh are going to be paying for street lighting once Hutton Heights Developments goes ahead, right? So... This this isn't um, from a, a pure principle standpoint, um, you know, it will happen right now. It might not be as much, but but it will happen. Right. So I just think when we vote, we need to take that into account um, that that this isn't, you know, this is going to be. And, you know, I think we all know the future developments of our municipality are probably going to be built onto that Hutton Heights development. Right. That's most likely. So just something to consider. Um is is this kind of is coming it's just a matter of whether we do a flat get rid of area rating altogether or or maintain status quo thank you uh deputy reeve and then councillor palmer please uh thank you three reeve uh just a, a, a technical question on this if it stays with the uh area uh the area rating where uh, uh it, it's different for each each ward when new lighting goes into a ward that doesn't have any lighting they'll be responsible for the entire cost holes wires lights bulbs everything in the installation and then that will come off of their tax base uh through you reeve to answer deputy reeve falconer's question uh yes that's how the area rating works so if uh say your word were to receive five new lights or a whole new intersection where the lighting or a whole new street where the lighting those costs associated with the per capital purchases, the upkeep, maintenance, staffing, labor, materials, supplies, et cetera, would all be charged to the Belioth Ward or that respective ward, sorry. Mm -hmm. So then it would be East Wallace, then would at that time would be receiving a lighting quote. Okay. Okay, correct. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Palmer, please. Yeah, thank you, Reeve. Um, yeah, it's not a question. Um, the Municipal Act allows for special municipalities to have special services. So it's there, we've been doing it. We have a history of it and it's made total sense for what uh, Councillor Van Hittersom says, you know, why should East Wanash or Blythe, well, Blythe, why should East Wanash pay for the lighting of Wingham or Blythe and vice versa with Blythe? Why should they pay for Wingham's? Um, I'm concerned that if we lose this, What's next? Um, the 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 main concern would be um, user pay user pay items. Like it'd be pretty easy to say, huh? Well, it's a municipal thing. Uh, let let the whole municipality pay for all the septic sewer of both towns, and, and here's East Wanash with nothing, and. Um, except for what Heighten Heights will develop at that time. And we've certainly paid for those items. Um, so that, those are my concerns is what's next? Because mm -hmm. we don't know. Nobody can say that for sure. Um, if, if, you know, it makes life a whole lot easier for you if it's just straight across the board. And it seems to be moving that way. So there's a big concern. <clears throat> um, okay. Okay. I'd like to make a motion though. You know, just could you just hold that for wait, a moment. All right. Uh, 
we know the street lights will be coming to East Wanosh Ward in probably August to October in that window somewhere. We don't know exactly when, so things will have to start. So I just hate it that we go through one, go through leaving, let's say, status quo, and then we see we got to go back to the original thing. So uh, again, it, it's making time uh, efficiency, and I think Councillor Wright alluded to that. But uh, go ahead, you had a, a motion. Oh, sorry. I have another question. Yeah, if because... we are going that way, then uh, we have power at every intersection at East Wamanos, and from a safety and security st standpoint, what our... Um, what our towns are very concerned about, we could put up some lights on either each intersection. The the little area that we're talking about in Manhattan Heights is just a couple of acres. And then everybody in uh, East Wamanos, hundreds of acres, have to pay for everything in, in the North Huron. I don't think that is right. Okay, okay Councillor Palmer, any other questions? Uh, then we'll go to Councillor Palmer's... No, seeing none, go ahead, Councillor Palmer. Yeah, my thought to to back this up is it would be good if we could try, you know, some years under our belt um, with East Wallenach paying for Hutton Heights and, you know, maybe the Belgrave Road will um, swing through there, you know, that see what that all totals up and see just see how that is first I, i'd kind of like to see that but anyways my motion is um that the council directs the director of finance to implement option one which is status quo as part of the 2025 uh, multi-year budget process Mr. Lamb, could you read that please yep uh thank you your worship so uh, the option being proposed by Councillor palmer would be that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives the report from the Director of Finance Treasurer dated April 15, 2024, regarding strategic plan goal number 3.5, explore the removal of area rating for information purposes. And further, that Council directs the Director of Finance Treasurer to implement option number one as part of the 2025 multi-year budget process. Okay, we have you moved it. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Van Hitterson. And I request they record it, a reported vote, please. So, Councillor Van Hitterson has requested a record a vote. So, if there's no further questions or comments from Council, I will. Um... Yeah, we have a question here. You know, three or eight, then, then, then uh, using that 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 logic of 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 wards just paying for their own wards, then why why would Blythe Ward then be responsible for any of the infrastructure? On phase two of putting in the the water and the sewer and into Hutton High or into Hutton Heights, if we're not re we're not responsible for the for the lighting, then why should we be responsible for the infrastructure? I'm just, Go ahead. I was just curious. Um, I would like still like to see option um, number one, and then uh, as Councillor Palmer alluded to, uh, when we when Hutton Heights is putting up their lights look at Hutton Heights as a special area as well, because Belgrave, uh, Auburn, and Whitechurch and the Humphrey subdivision are already uh, special areas too. They are paying into, or we are paying Central Huron and North Sternbury towards street lighting in some of those areas. Yep. Uh, so again, I'll read the motion back. Uh, that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives the report from the Director of Finance Treasurer dated April 15, 2024, regarding strategic plan goal number 3.5, explore the removal of area rating for information purposes. And further, that the Council of the, uh, that Council directs the Director of Finance Treasurer to implement option number one as part of the 2025 multi-year budget process. So, Deputy Reeve Falconer? No. Councillor McBurney? Councillor Palmer? Yes. Councillor Van Hitterson? Yes. Councillor Whitfield? Yes. Councillor Wright? Yes. And Reeve Heffer? No. So the motion carries four to three, with the no's being uh, Reeve Heffer, Deputy Reeve Falconer, and Councillor McBurney. Okay, at this time we're going to 7.6. Point one, 
CS 2024-04 North Huron Museum Deaccessioning Project Update and Report Number 10. Again, this is just about 700 uh, items on it. And uh, we've all had that report to look at. Uh, I just want to know, are there any questions for Denise? Or she's also brought some uh, helpers here tonight too that could answer any of these questions. Would D Denise, would you mind coming up to the podium? Are there any questions that do you see coming uh, from 7.6.2? Go ahead, Councillor Ann Henderson, please. Thank you very much, Richard. I don't really have a question. It's just like uh, you're doing an awesome job with your help all mm -hmm. over there. And um, as far as I know, the help from the county is disappearing. Is that what I'm reading in this? Or so do you need more time than till the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Or do you need more people? Or what is the, what are the consequences from um, the county not helping as much anymore. Sure. So I'm just going to invite Elizabeth from the Heron County Museum up just in case I do not quote this properly. Um, but right now their contract ended the end of March. So she had uh, two interim students um, helping with that process of taking on the items and accessioning them into their collection. Uh, that contract has ended. Um, there has been a bit of an extension. Um, they have found some money in other areas of the budget. Um, so the um, one of the interim people, but I'm not sure the length of time that they will be available. Thank you. Uh, through you, Reeve Heffer, the county isn't finishing all their work with North Huron. It was just okay. what happens to the artifacts after they come to the county that will slow down likely. So we still have plans for our permanent staff, the registrar and the archivist to continue to analyze the artifacts on the lists as you've been presenting them to us and then creating the transfers back to the county. What happens to them after that will slow down. Um, and we have an interim staff person who will stay on with us until the beginning of September to continue to catalog those into our collection. And then after that, it will be back to our regular staff to do that as part of our regular jobs. So we've gone from the two to the one to just our regular staff, but we don't have an intention of stopping the project at all. That's wonderful. May I do a follow up? Well, yes. Um, where can people look up? what is available for purchase or how how do they know or is that still in long time away yep okay. so the six um phases that we had kind of called them just to kind of give clarification was the first one is the easy items and those are nearing completion um so we have not got to the uh where we'll be doing one sale so we need to go through every single artifact and every piece of um um, items that are not even part of the collection in the museum, because we're not just talking about artifacts and archival items. We're talking about every single item in the museum. So then you can move forward. So the museum really needs to be emptied of everything uh, before we go. And the last portion of that will be um, for sale or, or that process. So we have to get through these other ones first. Perfect. So Thank right you. now we're, we're on um, problematic items and archival items um in and we'll be splitting those up into other um reports <laughs> thanks i'll just add into that um the hearing county museum is taking about 65 percent at this point in time so the majority of it is still going to the county museum um from the list that we've received at this point so if there is a sale list at the end that would be the steps after we look for other museums to take them on outside of the county. Um, for instance, if the item belonged in Bruce County or the Perth Museum because of its originating location, those would be first. And then that number would reduce down, hopefully, to even less that would have to go up for sale then. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other questions for the ladies? Go ahead, Councillor Palmer, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Reeve. Um, just wondering if you're bulging at the seams at the museum. Reeve, yes, very much so. Um, so if you came to the Heron County Museum now, um, we have lost one of our exhibit galleries that's on the main floor. We've turned that over to storage space currently. 
And uh, we're using that to house all of the items that are coming in from North Huron so that then we can catalog them at this point. So we are starting to put some of them up online. So if you go to the Huron County Museum's website to the online services, you can see some of the North Huron things. And when we're trying to do some outreach activities with them to get them back into the community, but the storage itself is about 800 square feet that it's taking up currently that was exhibit space at the museum. Thank you. Any other I, questions? I Go ahead. If I, I, I didn't finish the questions for Anita, and I'm sorry about that, or Van Hedersen. Um, The timeline. So we're not asking for more staff at this time. Uh, there is two very capable and wonderful um, staff. I needed to remark on that. Um, that has been doing a fabulous job, as you can tell by calculations. I mean, they're doing more than two an hour uh, for deaccessioning objects. So I just wanted to make that clear. So we're not asking for new. Our goal is for the end of the year, and we will try to give a new update as the year goes on. Um, I don't know how it will go. I, I really don't. So I want to be very clear about that. Um, that we have to finish the project and they are trying to do it as quickly as possible. So we will give another update later in the year. <clears throat> Any other questions for the ladies? Oh, I just appreciate uh, Elizabeth able to come and help us out uh, at that from the county. It's very much appreciated and thank you very much. So I'll read the, that the Council of the Township of North here and hereby receives a report prepared by the Community Engagement Coordinator dated April 15, 2024, regarding the North Huron Museum deaccessing project update and report number 10 for information purposes. And further, that the Council authorizes staff to continue with the deaccessing project for the list of artifacts attached to staff report CS 2024 04 following the North Huron Museum deaccessing policy. May I have a mover? Councilor Van Henderson, seconder, Councilor McBurney, all in favor? Carry. Thank you. 7.6.2, CAO 2024-08 Blythe Festival stage naming request. It's very straightforward. We had a, a report given to us. I, I just asking, are there any questions for our CAO or to go ahead, uh, Councilor Wright, please? Yeah, I, I don't have an issue with the with the report, or I don't think I have any issue with the um, the spirit behind it. But I can't support this motion as it's worded because there's absolutely no restrictions on what the stage could be named. So I assume they're going to name it after the family. I'm reading into it that that's likely what they're going to do. But you know, I, I can't support a motion that puts absolutely no restrictions on what the stage could be named. Right. So. I think we just need a little bit of a tweak in the motion in order to, you know, resolve that concern. Um, and then I'm fully willing to support it. Yeah. I'll ask uh, our CAO if he wants to talk on that or, or Mr. Gill. There. Um, uh, just to speak to, to that question. Um, uh, uh, our understanding from the lease is that we actually can't change uh, uh, the name of any of the spaces uh, without approval of the landlord, which, which would be all of you. So if we were going to change it to something obscene, um, uh, which obviously would be a huge detriment to our very public business, um, uh, we would still have to bring that obscene name to all of you or your future counterparts um, to vote on on whether we would use that or not. That's my understanding. Go ahead, Councillor Wright. So this has to come back to Council again then? Once the name is announced and selected or not? Go ahead, Gil. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, yes, I'm sorry. Hey, go ahead. Yeah, through your worship, just in, you know, in terms of, I think the concern is in terms of the language of the motion yeah. that we currently have um, before us. And and it currently reads uh, that the Council of Township of North Huron hereby receives the report prepared by the CAO dated April 15th regarding the stage name and request from the Blythe Festival for information purposes. And further, the Council grants approval to the Blythe Festival to name the stage in the Blythe Memorial Hall in recognition of a significant monetary donation from a from a family of longtime supporters of the Blythe Festival. 
Um, yeah, and I'm just brainstorming here in terms of what we could do to amend that motion uh, with respect to counselor's rate concern. I, I, I appreciate and respect it. Um, so just just an idea, could we not insert uh, to name this stage uh, in the Blythe Memorial Hall after uh, a family in recognition of a significant monetary donation? Right. I think that's the intent. I just want, wanted the motion to, to capture that. Count, uh, well, Deputy Reeve, please. For your Reeve, it, it's explained in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the order form here that the, uh, the name of the family has been shared with staff and there's no uh, reason to withhold the naming rights of the stage. So uh, I'm, I'm concurrent that our staff already know uh, of the proceedings going forward, I, I would I would I would leave it in their great hands to 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 know what the what's successful and what isn't. Gail, please. If I could add, I, I think uh, to say something like it after a family or in honor of of that family, I think would make sense. Um, I mean, just it's an abstract idea, but just thinking it through, like if a family came to us and said that they wanted to make an enormous donation and they were, um, but that they wanted to recognize. Um, you know, they wanted to 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 recognize um, an idea or an artist or somebody who uh, was important to them. Um, then I could see a, a space where it wouldn't necessarily be naming the stage for said donor. Say they wanted to make it a memorial. Um, you know, for the founders of the festival. If they wanted to name it in such a way, then I could see where you would want some latitude for such a thing. But I would also suspect at such a time that we could return and ask for uh, some kind of amendment or some kind of easement of the lease as it exists to be able to do that. Would that make sense? Any other qu questions here? And I'll turn it over to our clerk. Hey, go ahead, Clerk Lamb, please. Uh, so my recommendation would to be updated, the wording would be that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives the report prepared by the CAO dated April 15, 2024, regarding a stage naming request from the Blythe Festival for information purposes. And further, that council grants approval to the Blythe Festival to name the stage in the Blythe Memorial Hall in honor of a family of longtime supporters of the Blythe Festival in recognition of their significant monetary donation. Hey, may I have a mover? Deputy Reeve, Councillor Van Anderson, all in favor? Carried. Thank you very much for your time, Gil. Okay, number eight, um, corresponds to requiring action or direction. Seeing none. Council reports, I, I just like to uh, mention I was at a round table with our MPP, Elise Thompson, down in uh, Blythe, and he, she invited five um, local abattoir owners. And by the way, they're all very young that are doing this. And uh, they're just asking for some help with the government. Uh, for the people who work there, the inspectors, just for consistencies and things like that. And uh, it's a real good uh, afternoon, uh, just listening to their responses and uh, how well they love the job and how it's changing. It's going each each area, they there are certain areas they're going out in and uh, and uh, just growing their market. It's, it's a little bit different than what it was maybe a few years ago. And they all have their niche that they want to uh, focus in on. So it was a real good day. Then the county went on um, a local bus tour and uh, close to the start top uh, stop was at the Blythe um, Library. And it was really uh, an interesting time. The Trina, the librarian was there. And then they had the accessibility, accessible committee there. And uh, that was members Julie and Lori um, Faulkner. And uh, it, it, they just showed how or uh, Trina said how simple things can just make things uh, better there, like lowering the mirror a bit, just just little things. Uh, and again, uh, it was very well received and they do have a very uh, great accessible washroom there. And uh, it, it was good for all of us to see that. And then farther on, we went to uh, Mark Crest. They're just, uh, uh, they make bailers and whatnot. The 70% of their, Business goes out of country and um, they're just busy, busy. He wants to have the best prototypes going out there. And and it seems to be taking off very well, as you say, with 
labor shortages, uh, what they're what they're doing um, with those uh, bailers. They just got to work, work, work. And um, he, he he's very adamant of making this going. It's eight years he's been there. He started off in Fort Rich in a little back room spot and and on his farm. And uh, again, he's an entrepreneur. And and at the end, when we're going out the building, we went, had a great tour of it. At the end, uh, we saw this big picture and we asked, well, what's this about? Well, he's got a, another 10 acres behind the building there and he's and uh, he's making a paint barn and it's as big as the one that you see from the highway there. It is big. But every day he's moving a tractor trailer load of product going down to Toronto and back every day. And he just feels he can do that. Now that he's established, he can do that in his own backyard. And again, it's going to be great for the employment in this area. And uh, he's got about 85 people working for him now. And uh, it, it's just a, a win-win. And at the end of the thing, he said how he appreciates Huron County. So it, it is a great county to be in because of agriculture. Then our next stop was at, at the Molesworth Feed, the new building there. Again, it um, couldn't believe it. There are two people running that big operation, 140 ton, 120 ton an hour coming out of one, one uh, scale and uh, a 40 ton another hour. That's four of those big trucks an hour that have uh, move out of that, that area on the, on the average. And, and they, but they need to top it all off. Why they came to uh, wanted to add there, they need a hundred thousand acres of cash crop land to fill their need, what they have to come in there. They have enough product there for four days. And uh, again, they just appreciate uh, here in County and Perth that they can get the crops here that they need. And uh, it was very interesting. And then it, we lost time. We couldn't come up to the Edward street apartments here, but uh, uh, Barb Hall talked about it. And, uh, and then we went on back down number four again. Um, it was a great, great learning experience for us. So at this time, are there other council member board committee reports? Anybody? Go ahead, Councillor Ben Henderson, please. Thank you very much, Shreve. Uh, the Belgrave Community Playground Committee had a uh, meeting. They uh, they are as far that they are uh, uh, in contact with two companies, ABC Playground and Blue Wind Playground. Um, and uh, April 27th, they are having their uh, first major fundraiser. It's in the Belgrave Arena. It's from 5 to 8. It's uh, Mr. Wayne Fenton is putting up his famous roast beef, and they will have, will have some delicious desserts, and uh, it's it's going to be a really old-fashioned country supper, and uh, we're putting up the tables in the arena, so it's like the... Um, the uh, what is it called the turkey vita fowl supper in belgrave that's what we are uh, expecting so i hope everybody uh, contacts their neighbors for tickets and um, yeah we'll go from there thank you are there any comments by members go ahead councillor Wright, please yeah thanks for you reef um just to kind of follow up on a comment another member made earlier um I'd also like to see us um, take a more formal approach to the way we vote. Um, I've had quite a few occurrences uh, from people watching the videos that do not understand sometimes why things get passed and things get rejected, right? It's always clear when people vote for something. It is unclear if people are voting against something or if they're, um, or, or if they're just disinterested and you know, the way we vote does not give a councillor the opportunity to abstain from a vote, right? So, um, you know, it, it seems to be fairly normal voting to either vote for, vote against, or you could abstain. Um, I'm not saying we would need to uh, dis discuss it here or decide it here. I'm just raising it for kind of some discussions maybe between meetings. But, you know, I, I, I also think it could be a lot clearer process for there are people watching online about who's actually in favor of something and who's actually not. That's all. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Did some say just, okay. just to provide some clarity. So uh, um, there is no such thing as an abstention unless the member has a pecuniary interest. Um, so if the councillor doesn't uh, put their hand up, it's basically counted as a no vote. Um, so 
the, you could theoretically do all your votes through recorded vote. We did that during COVID um, on electronic um, meetings. So it was clear how every member was voting, uh, but that's something you'd need to update your procedure bylaw for. Um, but yeah, again, um, councillors not putting their hand up for a vote is basically captured as a no. So if something carried, it has it has four people in the majority or four members in the majority, and um, anything uh, other than that would only be captured under a recorded vote scenario. Go ahead, Councillor Palmer, please. So just to make sure everything is is right after what you said, um, Carson. Um, you know, nothing negative, um, Reeve, but. There are times when there's been three, it's basically a three, three, and then you decide, but you don't always, you don't put your hand up. It's just, you, you decide, okay, it's, it's, it's a pass. We know what that means, but to be technically correct, should you put your hand up? It's just a question. Pass it over to the clerk, please. Do you, uh, your worship to answer Councillor Palmer's question? The answer is yes. Um, from clarity and transparency, uh, it's much easier for the public to see how people are voting when they put their hand up. Are there any other comments from members? Seeing none, notice of motion, any notice of motions to be introduced? Bylaws 10, bylaw number 26, 2024, appointment to Boards and Committees Bylaw. And Mover, Councillor Van Henderson, seconder, Councillor Whitfield, all in favor? Carried. Bylaw number 27 2024, Service Agreement with Municipal Support Services Incorporated for Bylaw Enforcement, Property Standards, and Animal Control Services. May I have a mover? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, three Reeve. Uh, on the next couple of bylaws, with the uh, you know the uh, property enforcement and the uh, animal control of, officer, uh, I've noticed lately in some of the municipalities uh, close to us, some are opting out of that of this service altogether uh, because there just wasn't enough money coming in for dog tags, or people weren't buying the the tags to support the system, uh, and then having a shortfall for the municipality to have to come up with the with the with the uh, uh, the tax dollars to, to support the, the system. So I, I just wanted to make that comment that, that that there are some changes around us that uh, you know maybe that's not a service that we need to be taxing our our, our uh, constituents with. Just a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Mover, please. Councillor Wright, Councillor Whitfield, all in favor? Carried. Bylaw number 28, 2024, appointment of bylaw enforcement officer, property standards officer. May I have a mover? Counts, uh, Deputy Reeves, Councillor Palmer, all in favor? Carried. Bylaw number 29 2024, appointment of animal control officers. May I have a mover? Councillor Whitfield, seconder. Councillor Wright, all in favor? Bylaw number 30, 2024, tax rate bylaw. May I have a mover? Councillor Van Henderson, seconder. Councillor McBurney, all in favor? Carried. Next meetings and announcements. A Committee of Adjustment hearing will be held on Monday, May 6, 2024 at 530 here in the Council Chambers. The next regular Council meeting will be held on Monday, May 6, 2024 at 6 p.m. North here in Council Chambers here. The next Wingham BIA board meeting will be held on Thursday, April 25th, 2024 at 630 in the Hot Stove Lounge at the North here in West Cass Community Complex. The next Blythe BIA board meeting will be held on Thursday, April 25th, 2024 at 8 a.m. in Blythe and District Community Center. Are there any other announcements? I just want to make note that there's a Wingham cleanup day on April 22nd at 8.30. 
Everyone is welcome at meet at the train station. 12.1, Councillor McBurney notice a motor. Councillor McBurney, would you like to speak to this motion, please? Uh, I'm on the community safety and well-being plan for here town. And in regards to uh there we go. And in regards for this uh problem with uh uh intimate uh partner violence epidemic, uh other communities, uh Goddard itself, we started uh declaring this. And the idea is to get the Ontario government to do the same. And that's why I uh, would like to uh, move on this here motion I got here in front of us. Thank you, um, Councillor McBurney. Are there any questions for uh, Councillor McBurney, please? Councillor Palmer, please. Yeah, thank you, Rave. I'm totally in favor of this you know the the meat of it um it's an issue and it has to be dealt with it's a huge issue and it has to be dealt with um i'm a bit of a word nut and um so i have a word problem so it's a technical thing uh epidemic as used in uh, therefore be it resolved the meaning of epidemic is an outbreak viral bacterial some disease uh, that spreads quickly and affects many individuals at the same time, causing huge illness and or death. Like it's a health, I know we're, we're getting close in areas, but this is a total health. If you mentioned anybody on the street, epidemic, they know what it means. It means, you know, lock yourself in your house because there's a disease coming. All right. So um, I think, you just choose another word. You know, it should be as simple as that. Um, we have to be careful that we don't mix. Like words have meanings and we can't change them. We have to fight that. There's groups always trying to change the meanings of words and we can't. So like IP, IPV is a terrible behavior that's that you inflict on your intimate partner. Like we know that and it's spreading. We know that. So let's just check a different name. And I have a, um, a motion I'd like to put forth. Um, it's an amendment. Um, North Huron, so everything coming into it as normal. Um, North here and understands that IPV is an, um, an urgent matter that affects our society. This behavior often results in mental anguish and or death. We call on the Ontario government to make IPV a priority in its discussions and efforts and action is required. And that's number one, and then number two would be the same. Go ahead, uh, Kirk Lamp. Uh, well, so you have a mover in the motion of in Councillor McBurney. Uh, so I guess it would depend on whether Councillor McBurney thinks that the changes um, deviate too much from the original intent of his motion. Um, that being said, in cases of assistance, um, I do know pretty much every other municipality is passing this motion. Um, just from sitting on the community safety and well-being plan working group. Um, and if it's any assistance, Councillor Palmer, um, epidemic can also mean um, just something bad, widespread in a community. Just from a quick Google search here, that also comes up as a motion. So although epidemic is traditionally um, aligned with or, or related to infectious diseases, I think it can also be applicable in regard to um, just something bad, that is widespread in, in a community or, or um, geographic area. But um, it would ultimately be Councillor uh, McBurney of whether he wants his original motion to appear as is or if he's comfortable with the amendments. I would rather see it as is. Hey, do I have a second? You had a question here first, sorry. 
because we because <coughs> we have the country in Germany here. The word epidemic is uh, widely spread right now. I have to agree with uh, Councillor McBurney. The word epidemic is widely used right now in the uh, intimate partner violence uh, situation. And uh, I think we have to leave it like like it is the motion. Go ahead, Councillor Wright, please. Yeah, and if I, I could just speak to the uh, use of that word. The, the reason why that word is being used is because fundamentally the solution to this is a health-based solution. Um, it's mental health, it's other health issues. It has to be treated as a health care issue in order to resolve it, right? You're not going to lock everybody up. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to uh, please your way out of this. And so that's why this is widely accepted as the proper wording is so that it's recognized that this is a health issue and needs to be treated as such. Thank you, Reeve. So we had a mover and, and Councillor Van Hederson. All in favor? Carried. No closed session, conformed bylaw 31 2024, conformed bylaw. May I have a mover? Councillor Wright, seconder, Councillor Whitfield, all in favor? Carried. Adjournment that the Council of the Township of North Huron agree that there being no further business before Council, the April 15th, 2024 regular Council meeting be hereby adjourned at 701. Councillor McBurney, mover, seconder, Councillor Wright, all in favor. Whoops, everyone had their hand up. Okay, thank you.